Oh, we have lost a lot when it comes to PvE and Overwatch in the last few days. There is still a lot of content coming for the game. More than ever, actually. Let's have a look. Hey guys, I'm Dimzis from the Omnic Post. The focus in the last few days has been on what we lost. Very understandable and rightfully so. And while a lot of people have decided for themselves to quit the game, or they are at least thinking about it, many of us know that we'll still stick around. Some like myself for semi-professional reasons. I mean, I still enjoy playing the game. And others because they simply do not care about PvE. They were never waiting for that feature. Or they are still looking forward to the PvE content that is to come. And again, rightfully so. And to be honest, there is still a lot to look forward to. I mean, it is very human to fixate on the things that we lost, but luckily they have not abandoned the game altogether. If you look at that roadmap image that they shared, PvE sticks out like a sore thumb. But there is so much more that they're talking about in that same image. More than we've ever seen. And I wouldn't fault you for not being able to enjoy that. Because of the known issues, but also because they almost gave no context to the whole image. Most likely because they didn't want to draw away attention from the bad news. Or because they just suck at communication. I totally get that they want to devote attention to that impactful announcement. But I don't think this was the best way to do it. My point is that showing off that image without any context or maybe some gameplay added to that lack of trust that I have been talking about in the last few weeks. But the damage is done. And this too shall pass. Which doesn't mean that there's no long-lasting damage in the relationship with the community. But it is definitely going to get better. Look, I've been through these phases so many times by now. And not only in Overwatch, look at Diablo and Warcraft. The public perception on those games have been all over the place in the last few years. I don't know if any of you remember that Diablo auction house scandal. And look at it now. Ah, the memories. Anyways, a, a bit of a lengthy intro, I know. But I think it is appropriate. But today I want to take a good look at that image and try and dissect what we can expect for the future. So get out your rubber gloves and put on some protective goggles. We're going in. Season 5, the next season that is already starting in a few weeks, most likely on June 13th. Now in that whole list, let's start with the stuff that we, um, we understand. The animated short for Sojourn is finally going to be released. It's about time. I can't count the number of times I've poked someone on the team on Twitter asking them when they were going to release it. I was starting to think that they lost the drive on which they had stored the files or something. A lot of community members are really eager to see that animated short for several reasons. And the first one being Murphy, a little puppy. He stole players' hearts immediately, even if he wasn't fully rendered yet. It was a preview and he's so cute. Look at that. And second, because this animated short is going to set off the new story arc for Overwatch that we're going to play in those story missions in Season 6. I've said this several times in previous videos, but according to me, that animated short is basically what connects the trailer from back in 2019. Where the team reunites, a demon invades their ranks, and they kick the ass of a huge Omnic robot. In Paris, the Overwatch is back and they need a new leader, Jack Morrison. Well, he's hunting down Gabriel Reyes with the help of Anna. So the next in line would be Sojourn. Uh, I don't see her cooperating immediately. I think she's kind of enjoying her life back home in Canada with her little puppy. But my prediction is that she won't see any other way. She'll realize that if she doesn't find talent, talent is going to find her. And look, if you think about it, there's no better team to have behind you than a talking gorilla, a nice spewing demon, and a tall German that is a walking encyclopedia of dad jokes. In game, we are going to see the return of the summer games. This is an Overwatch 1 event that makes a return after we replaced it with an anniversary remix last year. In case you don't know about the summer games, if you're a new player, as the name suggests, it's kind of based on sports, summer sports, and a little bit of a beach team going on there too. Check out the Torbjorn skin and you get what I mean. So I expect to see more of these sporty or these beachy skins, like uh, Roadhog and Speedos for instance. <laughs> Try getting that image out of your head. Good luck. By the way, he flosses. And I'm not talking about his teeth. <laughs> yeah, now I did it to myself. Yeah. Usually this is the event where we get to play Lucio Ball, if you are into that kind of suffering, which is most likely going to be the case this time around. But they might add a variation of Lucio Ball in there, or this is, uh, this is going to be my new thing from now on with everything Blizzard and Overwatch. Or <laughs> they might add an, a new sports mode. My vote would be on Roadhog Volleyball. It's Peter. Uh, never mind. It just keeps getting worse. 
The On Fire Meter is returning. Again, for your new players, that On Fire Meter is basically an indication on how well you're doing in that match. And everybody can see it because your portrait will catch flames. It will kind of go whoop. <laughs> ooh, ooh. They removed this feature back when Overwatch 2 launched because they felt it was kind of used for toxic purposes. So I'm presuming that they kind of are doing something different with it. We'll see. All right, that was the stuff we understood. Now we're going into, I think it's that territory. <laughs> Let's have a look. During the dev chat, Aaron and Jared had shared that they're kind of changing their approach when it comes to seasons. Now what that means is currently not fully clear. But what they did say is that they're going to give every season a name. Like Mark or Julia. No, not those types of names. For instance, if you look at that roadmap image, you could think that season five is going to be called Mischief and Magic. And it will include a new limited time game mode called Quest Watch. Are they just going to add watch to everything now? Star Watch, Quest Watch, Overwatch? But anyways, it kind of sounds like a D&D version uh, of Star Watch. And by d and I mean Dungeons and Dragons. So maybe this whole season is going to be Dungeons and Dragons themed. We'll see. And then we have the category, I don't know. They mention a 5 versus 5 mini comp season. Is it normal comp 5 versus 5? A creator workshop mode. Oh, don't we have that already? Let me know in the comments if you have any idea what you're talking about. Now, the one thing that is missing that was supposed to be on here is a new map. And since it's not on the image, I'm presuming it's not happening. Which is kind of weird because that was the thing they said. New hero, new map. New hero, new map. You get the gist. That might be because of season 6, which is a nice segue. Let, let's check that out. Because that is going to be the season of throat. That is going to be the make or break moment. That is going to be, according to a lot of people, their last chance. First and foremost, of course, there are the story missions, but I discussed what we can expect for those in another video. Go check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. Besides that, we're getting a new support hero, something that we have known for a long time already. Some players noticed that the background of the title looked kind of familiar. Turns out that it is part of a touristic poster for Peru that you can find on Antarctica. Uh, this could mean that we're getting a Peruvian hero that this support is going to be hailing from the beautiful country of Peru. I know someone that is going to be very happy with that. If you listen to our podcast, you know who I'm talking about. Dominic Quickly, go check it out. By the way, there's also a Samoan poster that actually might be referring to the hero for season eight, which is going to be a thank hero, Maga. What? But might the next support hero be a former colleague of May? And more importantly, are we getting an Inca themed support hero? That would be awesome. We could actually get that totem hero I talked about, I don't know, ages ago. But we'll have to wait till mid August to know more. And um, I'm probably going to do a whole video about it. So yeah, make sure to subscribe. Something else we'll also have to wait for. And I'm also going to do a video on is the new game mode that we're getting in season six, Flashpoint. And game mode is going to be released with two maps, which might be the reason that we're not getting a map in season five. Now, judging by that image, one of them is going to be the India map. And the other one might be Gothenburg, but I'm not sure because I don't think Gothenburg is big enough. The thing is, some people in the team, including Aaron, had commented in the past that this new mode that they were really enthusiastic about, which is uh, about a lot of stuff, is going to be played on some of the biggest maps we've ever seen in Overwatch. Now, the India map, uh, that looks really big. I mean, I'm not talking about the country. The country is big, but so is the map. It's big and beautiful. And what a lot of players think is that it's going to be like Call of Duty's domination, which actually might be true. It is a mode in Call of Duty where players need to keep hold of different points on the map. And the moment they capture the three of them, they win. I think it's going to be closer to Strongholds and Halo, where you need to capture and hold at least two spots to start earning points. And the first one to reach a certain threshold will win the game. That sounds more like something Overwatch would do. We're going to get more info on that during the summer, most likely. Hero Mastery. That sounds like that single player PvE they were talking about in the developer chat. It sounds like something where you'll get specific challenges tailored to the hero that you're playing and that you basically can progress that hero and train to get better. Which ties into that extra player progression that they also promised for Season 6. It looks like we're getting a new Fire Rage, I think. It's going to be the anniversary event, which might just be a whole series of skins or maybe we'll get to play all the other modes like in the past. And that's it, but look, we might not get that PvE that we were looking forward to so hard and that they promised us back in 2019. But if you look at season six, it is packed, almost overwhelmingly packed. But anyways, right now it doesn't feel that way. We'll see when season six arrives. And then there's season seven and beyond, which is just 
a list of features that um, we'll see in the next few seasons, including that new tank hero in season eight. Maga. We'll also get a new collaboration, a new control map, a new winter event, new hero mastery missions that are going to add to that hero mastery thing they promised us for season six, but it is going to be multiplayer. Is the Roadhog and the Sombra rework? Some fan favorite modes are returning. I can't think what that is, but I presume it's going to be 2CP with a new twist, a rework 2CP. I mean, I would love to see Hanamura return. I really miss that map or Anubis. I know, I know, I, I did enjoy Anubis, sorry. Competitive mystery hero Heroes is returning. They are going to introduce a lore codex, which is basically a documentation of all the lore that you run into while doing your PvE story missions. It's all going to be filed and sorted for your pleasure. Now the one thing that kind of worries me about that whole list for season 7 and beyond, but it might just be a technicality, just an oversight, is that they don't mention more story missions in there. So this could mean that they're not planning to release story missions every season or not even every two seasons. It might be every four seasons, for instance, which, uh, which would suck. Look, I have so many questions about all of this. But on the other hand, a ton of content is on its way and especially in season six. Now, like I've said in every single video in the last week, we need to manage our expectations. Let's see how this all pans out. I think when it comes to disappointments, we're kind of done for the next few years. Now tell me, which of these features are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments. Join me during my streams on twitch.tv slash and make sure to subscribe. More updates on Overwatch.